the question is difficult for me to answer now because the context keeps changing uh, from what we've been doing in the past yeah. uh, to what we have now. Uh, Post-COVID, you see uh, our government becoming used to the freedom that it enjoyed uh, to take decisions without consultation during COVID times, uh, to <laughs> break down the, 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 their willingness to consult on a lot of policy issues. So the context keeps changing uh, uh, post uh, COVID. So the windows of uh, entry that we, we had in the past are beginning to shrink and close. But we have adopted a number of strategies. Um, at first, ASAP used to be very big on advocacy on the, on, on, on the forefront, calling on governments to do A, B, and C. But over the time, we've seen that it is easier to mobilize similar civil society organizations and voices that agree on, 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 on these things that we are uh, advocating for. So for example, I don't know if any of you here is aware of our attempt to monetize our gold royalties uh, around 2020, 2021, where government was intending to list our gold royalties that we get for free. Uh, irrespective of how profitable the mining business is on the uh, uh, stock exchange in, in Jersey, right? And um, we, we've quickly felt that, no, this is not something that we should be doing as a nation because if, and it goes to another point that I'll make later about approaching the conversations based on evidence. We've done a lot of modeling of the deal. Uh, we've had these papers on our website on the fiscal uh, arrangements that we've had. And we see that, no, this thing, we can't allow this to pass. So quickly, uh, with the help of our partners, including Oxfam, NRGI, and Co, we brought together uh, civil society for a new force, right? About 30 CSOs coming together to fight against this deal. And for two years, we have been at it. And uh, for the first time, we've got government instruct uh, the Office of the Special Prosecutor to do a corruption risk assessment on a public deal in Ghana. And the assessment revealed a lot of things that had forced the president to put a stay on that uh, um, uh, deal. Well, they tell us that it may come back at some point, but for two years now, we've not heard anything about it. So mobilizing people diffuses the risk of you getting frontal attacks from government, right? That's yeah. the first one. And it also helps you to pool resources together to go for the longer haul. Because for two years, if ASAP alone wanted to uh, engage in this advocacy, we wouldn't have got the resources to be able to push forward. But you've got someone bringing uh, this much for this press conference, another person funds the next press conference, another person funds a technical paper, and then you keep snowballing the efforts until you achieve the, um, the objective that you want to achieve. Now to my issue of approaching this uh, with evidence. When companies approach governments that they want to do business with them, they come with term sheets. They come with models of how they think that this project is going to benefit the country or benefit communities or improve revenue. So as civil society, we have to also develop the capacity that when we are speaking against those deals, we also present our evidence. It can't just be the usual emotive statements, oh, this deal is bad. Why are you saying it's bad? Where is your evidence? Have you done an independent environmental impact assessment to say that, oh, the biodiversity in this area is so rich that if you do A, B activity here, you're going to destroy it. And this is the evidence, okay. scientific evidence. You know, that will enrich the conversation and, and, and allow government to pay more attention to some of the advocacy efforts that we engage in. 